Good evening. My name is Bryony Perdue. This is Liquid Gold TV brought to you by Braeburn Whiskey. Over the past few weeks, we've been covering what we love about whiskey. And this week, we're going to hone in on what whiskey is as an investment. So fill your glass with something special and come and join me for another dram. This week's special guest is Steve Russell, who is the man to know if you are looking to invest. He's a wealth management expert and we are joined by him from Glasgow. So Steve, hello and welcome. Thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. We also have Neil Brown from Brayburn Whiskey, and I'm going to be talking about the uh, benefits of investment and investment in uh, alternative assets at the moment, specifically, of course, whiskey. So, Steve, what are the traditional ways in which a savvy investor might manage their portfolio to the best of their advantage? Okay, so a uh, traditional way is mainly kind of splitting your assets uh, in your portfolio over various uh, asset classes such as uh, stocks and bonds, uh, investing in some funds and commodities, uh, as well as some alternative investments. Um, so, for example, buying some shares in a company, also buying some government bonds and maybe some, uh, some gold and silver along the way as well. That's, 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 that's the traditional view. Well, I've seen that over the last few years there have been a lot of uh, ways for alternative investment for other assets that can be very valuable and make great returns. For example, whiskey, wine, art, all of these things. So, Neil, why whiskey as a tangible asset above other tangible assets? Yeah, so the best, the best way to look at whiskey as a tangible asset is look at it as a luxury tangible asset and comparing that to wine or to art there's a whole, there's a, there's a much better market scope for your cast because as Steve rightly said, you have bottle prices on the market. So you're constantly seeing the different golden years of whiskey and the value of your cast going up. So if you've got a 12 year old bottle of whiskey and you've got an 18 year old bottle of whiskey, there's going to be an apparent difference between those two bottles. So what you've got with whiskey compared to other assets is a clear growth scope for your cask of whiskey. So it's, it is the best performing alternative asset in the luxury market for that reason. That actually leads on really nicely uh, to, to going back to Steve and asking what are the factors that you look for in an alternative tangible asset? Projection is one. Um, how easily can we, uh, with the models that we have, um, and even some common sense, um, what do we think the performance is going to be, how that's going to affect the projection of the price in the future the historical volatility of that price as well. You need to understand the current market conditions of where it is because that's essentially when you are buying the asset. So maybe a couple of weeks back or forth from the current day, um, it may be cheaper or it even be more expensive. So these things need to be taken into consideration. And also how long you want to hold that asset for because some people have different strategies for long term, but then also have the short term. So if you want the short term, uh, which for me is between one to five years, um, that's maybe the kind of range of the whiskey that you would like to invest in. Um, but then if you're more long term, for example, if you want to buy a cask of whiskey now, but then hold it for 20, 30, 30 years for maybe chance of cashing it in to go to your children, then that would be a different uh, way to see it as well. That's a really interesting way of looking at balancing, obviously, how you treat an asset once you have it. But with uh, a balanced portfolio and a balanced portfolio being a very important part of investment, what sort of percentage of a portfolio do you sort of recommend would be wise to invest in tangible assets? OK, so uh, it's kind of changed right now. Uh, the current market has really changed it. So uh, pre-COVID-19, what I would um, normally consider would be a, a good kind of ratio would be uh, around about 40% uh, for, for, for a traditional investment, 40% in the debt market, 40% um, in equity market, 10% in alternative and 10% in commodities. Um, now that's now flipped, that is completely flipped from the recent performance in the market which some people will probably still stick to the traditional sense, but right now um, people are starting to kind of move their money out of these markets and move it into something that is a little bit more long term, um, even though it might be a little bit less liquid. Um, so for example, gold, people are moving their money into gold, uh, traditionally a safe haven, um, silver as well, um, even cryptocurrencies now, that's a big thing. That's um, 
people don't really know about it, so people don't really invest in it. But um, as an investor in it myself, I have quite a large chunk of my portfolio in that. Um, but I also have uh, some of my uh, investment in the alternative strategies as well. So now what I would be saying would be um, essentially halving what you have in the debt and the equity markets, 20% each, uh, um, and then doubling down on your, um, your your commodities and your alternative investments. Neil, what makes whiskey such an attractive investment for protecting your wealth? I, I always I always go on about natural growth. And that's what whiskey has. It's got natural growth. As I said earlier on, the older whiskey gets, the more valuable it becomes. And that's what I need to get into our clients' heads, into people who are looking to invest into whiskey. Having money in the banks, I say it's a secure place to have good money. But our motto at Brayburn is we want to protect your wealth by investing into whiskey. Now, we're not looking for your full portfolio, as Steve said. We're looking for you to put some money into a whiskey cask, let that whiskey cask mature over a five to 10 to 15 year period and make those consistent returns that the bank won't offer you or the stock markets won't offer you. So what whiskey will offer you is consistent returns and a secure, safe market. Uh, so there's more than one reason that we call it liquid gold, eh, Neil? Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah definitely. Now, uh, Steve, you've already mentioned the impact of COVID-19. Um, for those that are particularly familiar with investment, for people that are already sort of high net uh, individuals, uh, are you, from what you've seen and the effect that COVID-19 has had on the market, are you sort of expecting a V-shaped economic recovery or a more prolonged recovery? What do you reckon? Well, I know the popular consensus is a V-shape. Um, I, I personally don't see it. I, I think that the, uh, it, it's quite a popular and unpopular opinion. Um, but I think we're going to go more of a, uh, like a saw, saw-like pattern. I think it will be more like that. I think we're going to hit significant resistance on the way up, and then we're going to come back down. Um, but then the reasons why we come back down uh, will probably be around like businesses trying to get back on their feet, bars starting to open, uh, consumerism kind of uh, rising. Um, but then there's still going to be that fear in the market. And I don't think that it's going to be a steady rise up. Uh, I think there's going to be a lot of bankruptcies along the way. Um, I think there's going to be a lot of people that's going to lose their jobs, and I'm not saying that this is a this is just because of COVID-19. COVID was the kind of needle that hit the bubble that was there, um, and the bubble has been rising for since the 70s, essentially, um, with the uh, the whole financial crash of 2008 um, is is essentially the main reason why we're in this situation right now. Well, the system that we have doesn't work. Um, but we need to make the best of it. And, it, and it's a sad realization that we're realizing that, God, like America and Britain and all these big economies, they're really, really good and they're really big and they've got such wealth, but then realize it's actually not worth much when something like this happens. So, uh, yeah, I, I, I think we are going to struggle. I think uh, the next quarter is going to be a very big one. Um, and after that, we'll kind of see what happens with the projections. But yeah, I'd, I'd say a solid light pattern would be the next. Thank you. It's really helpful for uh, for visualising. Obviously, this is um, this is with your experience in investment and the market. This is uh, what you feel is going to happen. And there are obviously different ways to protect your wealth. I know what Neil would say. Uh, why is whiskey such a safe choice for investment in the current climate? I think you just you have to look at history. You have to look at the last hundred years, for example. If you look at all the worldwide events which has happened the last hundred years, i.e., world wars, the depression, the dot com bubble, two thousand eight, whiskey's come out stronger every single time. Whiskey will constantly outperform the global downturn, and because whiskey is a medium to long term investment, by the time your cast does come to fruition or you are looking to sell your asset. The reality of it is, Corona hopefully will be will be disappeared. The markets would have sorted themselves out, and during this crisis, when interest rates are low, and the markets are taking a tanking. You've had an asset outperforming every single investment vehicle out there in a safe, secure market. So, whiskey is a really, really good place to have your money right now to protect your wealth. Um, so, Steve, what is the biggest oversight 
When it comes to someone building a portfolio that people tend to make, an investment portfolio, of course. I think the main oversight is people don't necessarily know what they're investing in. Mm. They don't necessarily do their own research. They're putting their money in places where they think there's going to be growth, but there's there's no kind of real homework being done. Um, and you can see that um, quite a lot of people have stocks and bonds everywhere, but they don't really know what to look out for when they're choosing their investment. Um, that's prob probably the main one I'm, I'm seeing. So basically, just do your, if you're planning to invest, do your homework, ask people that do know and do your homework. Exactly, exactly, Brilliant. that's exactly it. This has been a fantastic chat with Steve Russell, wealth management expert, and Neil Brown from Braybone Whiskey, talking about the wise ways to invest and talking about how valuable whiskey can be at times like these. Thank you so much, both gentlemen, thank you. Thank you, Brian. Thank you for thank having you. me, thank you so much. This evening we are very pleased to welcome Colin Mackay who is a musician and a lover of malts and we are going to talk about Colin's relationship to Braeburn because he has become a client and investor of whiskey. Hello Colin. Hi Bryony, how are you? Very well indeed thank you, it's very sunny and lovely here, how about you? Really nice, beautiful, it's a shame I'm locked in. <laughs> Isn't it for all of us? Huh? Uh, now, Colin, can you tell us a little bit about uh, how long whiskey has been a part of your life? Forever, since I was five years of age. It's uh, it's in a water supply up here. I, I come from Speyside, so my grandfather and my father, it was uh, mandatory to like whiskey. Um, so you obviously love whiskey and you obviously know uh, quite a lot about whiskey, having grown up around the area of Speyside. Uh, but what is it that got you into the idea of investing in casks of whiskey? The volatility in the, in the market as it is at the moment, people want tangible investments. Gold is at a high price just now, so I thought I'd get some liquid gold. Great, great. That even ties in with the title of the show, it's magic. <laughs> now, Sam, why did you consider uh, whiskey to be a good investment for Colin in particular? Colin came through to us. We got speaking about his love of whiskey, which we've just discussed there. He's got that clear passion. But he also highlights why he wanted to invest, whether it was whiskey, whether it was, you know, into property or stocks. Um, where Colin's at in his life now, you know, what he's getting towards, perhaps his later life retirement. Um, for him to buy some quite young casks um, from top, top brands, um, to kind of be an objective for his retirement. So um, it was his passion for whiskey, but also is objective too. Well, it makes sense when you are uh, when you're in the creative industries. There isn't the same sort of system for uh, planning for each stage of your life. So, invest in something that you love that's going to make you a nice return. It makes perfect sense. It does, and it's it's actually um, it's all part of the investment. Yes, you want to make money. You want to buy something and see the profit from that in five, ten, or fifteen years. But it's also about having fun. We're investing into whiskey. Um, so yeah, that's, that's certainly a part of it. Colin, um, how have you found the uh, the process of beginning your sort of inroads into investing in whiskey? Have you enjoyed it? Yeah, I, I have very much, Brian. I think it, it's all about relationships and you know, whether you're buying a tube of toothpaste or a space shuttle, you're dealing with people. And I've found some excellent to deal with. It, it can be a, you know, a big investment for a lot of people. So they need to go in and, and have a think about it. It's very sensible with regards to giving people space to think. So I wouldn't have any reservations about recommending any of my friends to deal with Brayburn and Sam because uh, I wouldn't do that lightly, you know. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to building the portfolio. You, I'm sure that you're aware that over the last few years that uh, bottles of whiskey have been going for sort of unprecedented amounts. It's been absolutely amazing at auction what some bottles are fetching. So why did you choose to invest in casks instead of bottles? Well, flexibility, really. There's more options. The, the mature process ends when it goes in the bottle. So um, I thought it was a good idea to have liquid assets. and. Uh, it gives me flexibility. I can keep it in the cask or I can bottle it. 
the options are there. Sam did a great job balancing the portfolio. So I, if I want, I can exit at five years or 10 years or maybe even 20 years. But the objective is to build a portfolio that gives me opportunity to exit when I so wish. So it's, it's uh, Sam did a great job in, in doing that. And, and when the lockdown's over, we'll go and visit the casks and uh, have a bit of fun. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I'm sure Sam is too, because Sam, you uh, you've mentioned before that you, the relationship that you build with uh, with clients like Colin. You actually you don't you don't get into this just you know it's, it's obviously an investment prospect, but it also you, it's a long term relationship because of the amount of time it takes to make a decent return. So you've got to get on with the people that you that you work for. Certainly, just from a, a human perspective, it's good to work with people that you like that you enjoy. Um, so as Colin said, when this COVID-19 crisis is over, we can go up to the new uh, facility we have on Speyside. We can view his cask, he can sign his cask if he really wants to. Um, he can taste his cask. You know, we've actually got a, a beautiful um, five-star tasting room. So for all of our clients, not just Colin, you know, throughout that long, long journey, they can come and visit us in the office. We can take them up to Speyside, go into the warehouse and actually sample the investment they've made. So. It's very special. It's very special. Would you add anything to what Colin said about investing in casks over bottles of whiskey? Colin made a very good point. So in terms of the flexibility, you're not buying a bottle, which has already come from a cask. Um, the most important thing is the maturation. Um, I've mentioned it on previous shows that if Colin was to buy a, a 10 year old bottle of say Fulmore, for example, and keep that bottle for 10 years, it's not gonna change. It's still gonna be that same bottle that you bought 10 years ago. If you buy a cask of 10 year old more and you keep it for 10 years, um, you've then got a cask full of 20 year old more. So um, that's certainly something that you don't get with bottles that you do get with casks. And uh, Sam, why did you advise Colin to invest in the particular casks that you have, that Colin, you've chosen to invest in? Why those ones? Two main reasons. Colin's mentioned one, which is time and the diversification that he has so he can sell his 12 year old Kalila in five years' time at the age of 18. Um, he can sell his 10 year old Link Act, one year old Linkwood cask in 10 or 11 years at the age of 10 or 12. So he's got that diversification. Uh, but the branding as well, he's got Highland Park, he's got Kalila, and he's got Linkwood. So the brands that he's invested into are very strong. Um, exceptional brands. So those two factors are the main, the main reasons. Now, um, Colin, we've talked about the fact that you build a relationship with uh, Braeburn as you invest in your casks, but have you got any friends who also invest in whiskey? I do. I do. I have several friends from the great state of Tennessee that would be interested in, in some investment in casks. Their taste in whiskey isn't very good. They think Jack Daniels is whiskey and also Jemison's. They think well, very good whiskey, but we need to educate them. But I do my best for the whiskey industry. I, uh, I met them at a music festival several years ago and that resulted in a great friendship. We went across to Tennessee to do some recording. Craig, is, my good friend, has sold something in the region of seven million albums. <laughs> I never knew he'd, he'd you know, was as successful as he is. And uh, I, I booked into this wee Best Western Hotel. He arrived in this beautiful Stingray Corvette. It's like a, an American Ferrari. And he looked at the hotel and he looked at me and he says, are, are you staying here? I goes, yeah. He says, man, get your things, come back to my place. Well, his house had a bigger pool than the hotel. <laughs> so we had a fantastic six weeks, made an album, with uh, Grammy Award winning producer who'd done a lot of work with Bob Dylan, Alison Krauss. So, yeah, so they, um, you need to get the cast. He'll probably want a cask of McCallan. Jeez. <laughs> Hard to come by. Hard to come by. Uh, and was this the uh, was this the Whiskey Morning album that you did across in Tennessee? Same album. Awesome. We've awesome. played a lot at the Whiskey Festivals over the years, but the, the album's done with about eight really excellent session guys, Nashville. Wow. But yeah, a lot of fun. So we can educate them. Our challenge, Sam, is to educate them on whiskey. And then we'll, 
get you a sale of a McCollum class. There you are. That's a deal. Ready for the challenge. <laughs> <laughs> This has been a fabulous chat with Colin Mackay, musician and malt lover, and Samuel Gordon uh, from Brayburn Whiskey, talking about what it is to invest in whiskey for yourself and what that means. Thank you so, so much, both Colin and Sam, and take care and enjoy the rest of your evenings. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, Colin. Thank you. Every week on Liquid Gold TV, we love to have a performance from a fantastic musician. And of course, this week is no exception. We bring you Colin Mackay. Day is dawning, whiskey morning, take my blues away. Whiskey morning, why oh, hear you calling? Whiskey morning, take these blues away. of another week of Liquid Gold TV brought to you by Brayburn Whiskey. I hope you'll join me again. See you next week for another dram.